here they are. Decoration, 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 decoration. Man, they're not fruitful. You know, and it's great, and we, we want decoration. And he's looking for fruit. So, that was a wonderful thought. And I, and I mean that genuinely from the bottom of my heart. That was a wonderful thought. I will write that down later. The last one that is mentioned there um, is perfect soil. I don't need to spend a lot of time here. Perfect soil, verse number 8. And other fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30, some 60, some in 100. Go down to verse number 20. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some 30-fold, some 60, some in 100. Let me just give you the quick outline. Several facts about the soil that is represented and several facts that the soil is a representation of your heart. Are you ready? Here we go. We're going to hit them. Real, real fast. Number one, it was prepared soil in verse number 20a. And these are they which are sown on good ground. It's good ground. What makes the ground good? What makes this rocky ground and this hard ground and this thorny ground, what makes it good ground? Preparation. Preparation. A hundred years ago or however long, how long have you guys been at the farm there? I know I'm picking on you now. How long have you guys been on the farm? Over a hundred years? You know, when, you got, when the family showed up there for the first time, that wasn't a farm. They worked that ground. I'll guarantee you there were some man hours that went into taking large rocks and things out of those fields by hand, putting them on the back of a wagon. This was before, you know, the transportation and things that we have now. A lot of work, and there's still work that goes into it. A uh, hundred years or whatever removed from that, still work every year, isn't there? It seems like that stuff just comes up. Ground's full of rock. Hey, it's preparation, it's preparation. Working and working and working. Man, when they came there, they had a desire to see a, a farm and get some things and grow some fruit and feed their family. And that was the whole uh, reason for farming industry. And people farm back then, feed our families. And now we're taking farming away. But anyways, uh, I mean, and, but it takes preparation. That takes time. And that's not easy. That's hard work, Brother John. So it's, the perfect soil is not, is prepared. Uh, Ezra 7, verse number 10, if you're writing notes, you could uh, run that out later. It's very interesting. It is prudent. It says, they received what they heard. That's prudent. Well, you and I ought to be prudent. Received what they heard. If any man have ears to hear, what's the next phrase? Let him. Let him. It's more than just having these. My wife says, you have ears, and a lot of times you don't listen. Hmm? She might say something to me and I didn't receive it. Why? Other things I'm thinking about instead of what she's saying. So you would see there it's prepared, it's prudent, it's perceptive because they heard and understood. They hear the word, receive it, and they're perceptive to it. Uh, we could chase that. In Matthew 13, verse number 23, the other text with this story talks about that. Uh, it is pure, Luke 8. The other story in Luke 8 and verse number 15, uh, it is pure. The Bible says, and these, they hear the word and receive it, out of, and these out of a pure heart. Boy, it's clean. Isn't that interesting? See how you need to put all the texts together and let them work together simultaneously? Because you'll get a full understanding of what's going on in the text. It's persistent because the Bible says in Luke 8 verse number 15, it uses the word keep it. It means to hold fast to it. They are patient in Luke 8 and verse number 15. All this stuff is in, the, and is in the gospel of Luke on this story. The persistency, the patience, they with patience bring forth. I believe it was Hebrews. The writer said, you have need of patience. I mean, you want to be honest with the preacher tonight? You want to show your hand and say, man, I, I want everybody, I want myself, I want everybody to produce fruit. Like, no, nah, I don't want to wait. That's me. I don't want to wait. But now, wait a minute. The Bible says that the one that's striving and the one that's trying, I love those people. There are people represented at the Calvary Baptist Church. Please, I'm not being critical. But there are people represented. I know we're talking about, man, this, and we're not talking about, you know, individuals. We're not trying to do that. That's not what we're after. We're trying to answer some questions. But there are people, Brother Hawk, that I think about the Calvary Baptist Church. 
and that's where they're at. Now, don't take this the wrong way. They may not be all that I think that they should be. Does that make sense? But I'm not all that I think I should be either. Okay, so I'm going to put myself in that category. But I see them, and I hear them, and I watch them, and I say, they were there, and now they're there. And it's taken time, but I'm, Lord, just going to keep going because then they're going to be there. And I remember when I was there, and now I'm here, and I see, I see guys that are over here, and I see ladies that are over here, and I'm here, and I want to be there. Patience. And then it's productive. Mark 4.20, it brings forth fruit. You know what that is? Brother Mark, you correct me on this, but I don't think I'm, I'm wrong on this. Your, your trees, your, your apple trees that you have there, they produce much fruit when they are mature. Right? The mature trees produce the nice, the good fruit, the baby trees. I mean, man, when you first plant an apple tree, how long does it take to get fruit off an apple tree when you first plant it? Seven years. Isn't that interesting? But the mature ones give you fruit. He's talking about maturity. I'm a 30. He's a 60. He's 100, 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold, 100-fold. He's dead, 60-fold, 55, 28. You see what I'm saying? Well, I want to be 100. We'll strive for 100. But it's God that gives the increase. And when you reach the level of maturity where God wants you to be, you'll begin to produce fruit. Do you know that, and I'm going to pray, but I want you to understand something about fruit. It's not always just people saved. The Christian life and producing fruit in the Christian life is fruit in prayer, God answering prayers. It is Bible reading. I mean, Miss Stacy, I'll pick on you, but listen, you can be as fruitful as the person that's been saved for 50 years as a teenager. You want to know why? Because you yield yourself to God and he produces fruit through you, through your prayer life. Somebody who's been saved 20 years can't get a prayer answered. She goes to the throne of God. She's got a prayer life that's pleasing to God. He starts answering her prayers. The prayers are going, what in the world? There's fruit in your Bible reading. There's fruit in your service at the church. There's fruit in your, your soul winning. There's fruit in your family. I mean, boy, Christian fruit, when it comes to the thing, it's big. This is a big tree, not just souls. Now, souls are in there, and we get that. Man, next Sunday, I get to go and take part in a service for a young man that was saved under a meeting that I was preaching, that walked in as an atheist and walked out born again. And married a girl that walked in an atheist and walked out born again the next year. Now they're married, been married three or four months. And now surrender to the Lord and going to plant churches and dropped out of college and are going to plant churches on the East Coast and he's working in it with the youth in his church and the youth department is doing well and he's preaching and he's teaching and he's a soul winner and God is using him. And I look at that and I go, I didn't do it, I just preached. And he heard the gospel, and then somebody else came along and witnessed to him afterwards and spent time and spent time and spent time, and all of a sudden he trusted Christ. And then I left. And a preacher stayed there and watered and watered and watered and watered and watered and gave him more seeds. And now, man, he's growing. And I go back to that, and I say, that's a little bit of fruit that I can look at and say, that's a fruit of my ministry. What a blessing. Hey, when that happens, I'm going to tell you what, it does something to you. You'll want to see it. We can all have that. God wants it for us. Where are you at? Packed soil. Got thorny soil in there. Pretending soil in there. Prickly soil in there. Or perfect soil. Not perfect Christians. But we serve a perfect God. 
Break up your fallow ground. Sow in righteousness. Father, help your people. Lord, you, you challenged